Welcome back to High Point University Club Hockey here. I'm Graham Tuck, the voice of the Panthers, with Luke Artizone beside me, and we are here at the Winston-Salem Fairgrounds Annex for the Panthers' first game of 2022. Today's matchup, the Panthers and the Demon Deacons, and it should be a good one. Let's go back to the last time that the Demon Deacons and the Panthers played Luke. It was a great game, one that ended in a tie, went to the extra period overtime. No score was settled there, and the Panthers were largely carried by freshman netminder Michael Olweiler in that game, and that's who we'll see in the crease today for the Panthers. And he faced 66 shots in that game, saving 62 of them. He's going to be a big key if the Panthers want to come out on top in this contest. And then for the Demon Deacons, they'll be led by freshman forward, or excuse me, senior forward, Andrew Gebhardt. He has been a phenomenal force since his freshman year, scoring goals after goals, ACC Player of the Year in his resume as well. And he is a stud for this Demon Deacon squad who is playing their first game of the new year as well. For the Panthers, they've got a big new addition on the defense line. Forward, or excuse me, defenseman Alex Sawney is back in the lineup wearing number six for the Panthers. Some might remember him from last season. He's back on the squad for the new year and he'll be a big part of the Panthers game plan today. We'll go into the starting lineups for both squads. First, we've got the Panthers. They are led again by Michael Olweiler in the crease. Uh, you'll see Ian Temkin there with Eric Smith off to the side, but Olweiler gets the starter's nod. The defenseman, Alex Sawney, gets the start in his first game back alongside Jack Olson on the top defense line. And then the forwards, the senior line, Rob Cazola and Paxton Nup with centering that line, Tyler Calkins. Still awaiting the starting lineup for the Deacons, but we'll get that to you as soon as we can. Luke, what are you looking forward to about this matchup as the Panthers play their first hockey game of the new year? Well, I think one thing to keep in mind is that these two teams did tie last time. I think uh, eager to break that tie and come out with a win. I think the Panthers are ready and want to start off the year good, so we'll see. Michael Olweiler is definitely going to have to keep up that play. Uh, hopefully he can withstand as many shots as he did last time, and we'll have to see. And Panthers need to attack more aggressively in the offensive zone, but it should be a good game. A couple of practices this week after a long break. Their last game played for the Panthers was December 4th against the UNC Wilmington Seahawks, another M2 opponent in the ACCHL, similar to the Demon Deacons they face today. We'll be back with the first period in just a couple of moments here from the Winston-Salem Fairgrounds Annex, Panthers and Deeks after this.
And we're back ready to get underway here from the Winston-Salem Fairgrounds Annex. Again, I'm Graham Tuck with Luke Artizone bringing you Panther Hockey on the HBU Club Hockey YouTube channel. Friday afternoon action here in Winston. The starting lineup for the Deacons. Failed to mention it earlier, Rigby, the starting defenseman wearing number two. Corwin wearing number six. The forwards, Brendan Guaguar, Andrew Gebhardt, and Sam Howell. The starting forward line, and Jack Namikas, the starter in net for the Deeks. Should be a good one here in Winston. Both teams, been a long time since their last game, but we're ready to get started in the new year here. A change to the starting lineups as Escala is in for Tyler Calkins on the top line, but winning the draw quickly are the Panthers and they're into the zone offensively. Escala shoots it around the boards, looking for Cazola in the corner. He'll body a man off and it's picked up by Gebhardt for the Deeks. Batted down by Nup, he'll keep it in the zone. Sticks cancel, puts it into the corner. Cazola staring pass for Escala, a great chance early on for the Panthers, but they couldn't get a shot on goal. Escala backhanded pass to Cazola, bodied off in the corner by Gebhardt. Rimming it all the way around are the Deacons, and now a two-on-two -two opportunity. Gebhardt joining the play. It's a three-on-two now. Gebhardt moving in on the backhand. A shot on Oldweiler. He scores! A quick goal for the Demon Deacons. Not a minute into the contest, and Gebhardt gets the Deeks on the board, and it's 1-0 Wake Forest. Yeah, not something you wanted to see for the Panthers starting out. Uh, that goal came very quickly, and Panthers really couldn't do much to stop it, so we'll see if they can... Uh, bounce back and fire off some more goals in the Deacons, but for now, Panthers have got to step it up from that. Defense just got caught flat-footed, and that speed of number 29 in gold is nothing to be messed with. He's got some wheels on him, and he showed him off there. And that's a hand pass. We'll have a whistle in the neutral zone. 19-13 left to go in the first period. It'll be an offensive zone draw for the Panthers after that hand pass came in the defensive zone for the Deeks. They'll win the draw back off the inboards. It's pitched all the way to Kerouac. Good forecheck from Ryan Henry. He'll keep it in on Kerouac. Henry comes away with the puck. Backhands it to Johnson in the corner. This line is Johnson, Arsenault, and Henry. Kuntz keeps it in at the blue line. His shot blocked in front, went up into the air and batted out of the zone by the Deeks. Arm is up for icing, but it's played and weighed up off. Arsenault getting to the puck. He'll play it behind his own net. Dances around a couple of Deeks, backhands it off the end boards to Henry. Pass too far out in front of him, shot on, stick save, made by Olweiler and an easy one his first of the day. But the Deeks still with possession, backhanded pass, it goes off the boards to Siffringer. Siffringer, now Kerouac, he'll come away with it. And a chance for the Deeks now. At the blue line, fan on a slap shot. And that puck clears the zone. That was Anderson who couldn't get the shot on goal. And now Nick Fallon will take it in the defensive zone. A little substitution here by the Panthers and Deacons. Let's see if the Panthers can get out of their defensive zone. In the neutral zone, Logan Kennedy can't come away with the puck. He'll get it into the defensive zone. For the Panthers, Jack Olson plays it. Nifty little pass, he'll find Pageant. And now Logan Kennedy is loose. He'll get it into the zone. And in the corner, picked up by Macheska. Now Kennedy to Olson at the point, but he can't get it on his tape, and it'll leak all the way back to the circles in the high point zone. Pageant, the forward turn defenseman. He'll play it to Nup, who backhands it back to him in the corner. Aiden Pageant. He'll wheel with it a little bit. Pageant still across the red line. He'll get it into the zone. High point gets off for a partial line change. Escala in on the four check. That puck comes free to Olsen, who can't settle it at the blue line yet again. And now Nup will play it in the neutral zone. Able to dance around one Deacon. But at the attacking blue line, it's Shelvin who gets it into the zone. Nup in the corner. He'll win the puck battle. Unable to be kept in the zone, and now with some speed is Escala, but he can't catch up to the defenseman Rigby. But before it gets across the red line, he'll shoot it back into the Panther zone, offensively speaking. 16.42 left to go in the first period here. one nothing Demon Deacons. Calkins will hit the ice. Arms up for offsides, and collecting is Alex Sani for the Panthers. 
That play batted down in the defensive zone by the Deeks. It's Blakely who play it along to Licavoli. He'll slide it up to Gregoire, who plays it back, didn't like what he saw. Heavy forecheck from the Panthers here early down, one nothing. Cazola, Johnson, and Henry, the forwards on the ice. Playing keep away is Blakely. And they're looking for a strong breakout pass here, and they may have found one. Gebhardt, one man to beat it, Sonny. Gebhardt on the backhand again, that shot, he scores! Nice take there by Gebhardt. He took it down and was really fast moving on the ice going into the Panthers defensive zone and was able to slip by him and shoot it right there. Olweiler not having his best start to the season, uh, or to the game, I guess. But hopefully he can bounce back. And that was a spitting image of the first goal Gebhardt scored, wheeling in on the backhand, shot on the backhand, except this time, he beat Olweiler five hole rather than near side. So two nothing, Demon Deacons. Gebhardt two, Panthers nothing here with 15.36 left to go in the opening period. Gebhardt making his presence known early in this game. Nice little move by Siffringer. No, that's Howell, he'll get into the zone. Finds Gebhardt, Henry with a takeaway. Henry with some speed, he'll bring it into the zone. Henry, dangles around one, between the legs and a shot, it goes just wide, couldn't get it on goal. Oh, what a move that was from Henry. Behind the net, it's picked up by the Deeks, and now Howell has the puck. Big hit by Macheska, and Gebhardt with some speed, he'll look to break it out. Gets it back to Howell. Howell gets it into the attacking zone. Kuntz back on the back check for the Panthers. He's bodied off by the captain, Gregoire. Now Fallon, he'll play it up to Kennedy. Gets it around his man. He'll hit the ice. No icing, though. Playing it off the wall is Calkins for the Deacons. Siffringer. He'll play it to his line mate. That's Kerouac. And now it'll be Macheska who brings it across the blue line. Macheska gains the zone, dumps it in. Kennedy lets it slide by, and now Nup will pick it up. He'll take a hit into the boards from Kerouac. One of the alternate captains for the Deeks. And a big hit put on by Macheska. A little shove after the play by Jennings Lobel. Pageant gets it into the zone for the Panthers. And they'll go off for a partial line change yet again. 14-10 left here in the opening period. 2-0 Deacons. Both goals courtesy of Andrew Gebhardt. That is a questionable offsides call, I must say. But it benefits the Panthers. It'll go to the neutral zone. 13-59 left on the clock here in the first period. And with only three shots on goal, the Deacons are up 2-0. Yeah, the Panthers will take that penalty. Whether it was the right call or not, that remains to be seen. But Panthers need to get uh, time possession back on their side. That puck was dropped a bit prematurely. Escala hadn't gotten lined up yet, but the Deeks will win it and getting into the zone on the stick of Durant. That one's put towards the crease. Fitzpatrick deflected it in front, couldn't do anything with it. That puck's caught on the back of the cage. Centering pass and a good one, and it's broken up by Padge and good defensive play. And now Nup and Escala in a two on two. Nup will hold up, fire a shot, it's blocked, and it goes into the netting out of play. We'll have an offensive zone draw for the Panthers. Well, blocked shot, but this is what we want to see from the Panther offense, just keeping the ball in the defensive zone of the Deacons and trying to get, trying to get more shots off and get more looks. Ryan Henry had a nice one earlier. Just need to see more uh, plays like that. One back to Sawney on the draw. His centering pass intended for Henry. It's broken up. And now a three on two for the Deeks. And they're off sides. Couldn't get the clean entry there. Bit too premature on the entry was Rigby. High point still yet to net a shot on goal. A bit of a cold start to the new year here for the Panthers. Oh, good getting that offsides penalty. That looked like it could be trouble for the Panthers. Yeah, a bit fortunate there. Odd man rushes have been their demise so far here in the first period. In the defensive zone, it's Sawney. He'll get it to Henry on the boards. He'll lose the puck, though, and put back into the zone for the Deacons by Gallen. Calkins, nice little backhand pass. He'll get it around to Johnson. Johnson, stretch pass for Henry. He tips it at the red line, so it's in on sides, no icing. Henry, fortunate not to get called for a hook there. He'll hit the ice, and the Deacons have an opportunity to break out. Ahead of the defense, was the forward Grossman, but a great diving play by Sonny. Broke that up quickly. 
Alex Brown puts a hit on at the blue line, his first time on the ice today. And a penalty is up. We're gonna see who this is on. Sonny got tangled up after the play. With Chauvin, and I think it's gonna be Sonny going to the bottom. Yep, that is the case. It's going to be Alex Sawney in the box for the Panthers. Two minutes up on the board. And it's a Wake Forest Demon Deacons power play here. Panthers have not been fantastic in the power play this season, so we'll see how they do in this possession. First time on the penalty kill today for the Panthers. The Deacons set up the umbrella. Slap shot from the blue line looking for a tip. Couldn't get one. And it's played back into the zone by Licavoli. Back up to the circles, now it's Sam Howell. Plays it down to Gebhardt. Back up to the point, slapper, it gets through, they score! Great passing there by the Deacons. Not sure if that got deflected or not. If it was a clean entry, it's Licavoli with the power play goal for the Deacons, and that'll make it three nothing here in the early stages of the first period. 12.08 left. Great puck movement there by the Deacons. Uh, it's already 3-0, so the Panthers are really gonna have to step it up. This is getting ugly pretty quickly. So we'll see if the Panthers can at least get some shots on the opposing goal. They have really struggled in that uh, you, this game. You got a feel for Olweiler at this point in the contest. He's allowed three goals on four shots so far, two of them on breakaways where his defense got caught flat-footed, and then the third one on the man disadvantage for his team. Yeah, it's been pretty unfortunate for Olweiler today. Licavoli with the goal for the Deeks. That's a bad pass, but able to keep it in is Escala. That pass finds Cazola at the circles. He'll hold up, looks for a pass, shot, and a save made. First of the day by Namikis. Great look there by Cazola, though. Fallon with a slap pass. That one gets through. Cazola fans on the shot. Escala puts it into the crease. Still loose, and it goes off the side of the cage by Cazola. Looked like Namikis had to make two saves on that chance. Three quick shots on goal for the Panthers. Offense picking it up here. Cazola keeps it in at the blue line. His slap shot can't find the near post, and the Deacons will pick it up. Howell at the circles. He'll throw it off the boards. That was a odd pass, but a good one. And Kuntz will backhand it into the zone at the red line. Nemicus, Nemicus holding down the fort very well for the Deacons. Olsen tipped that pass at first, but it's brought in by Kerouac. Looked like somebody broke a part of their stick. Might have been Kerouac. I think the shift, or excuse me, I think the foot of the stick. No, it's Jack Olson who's stickless. Now a pass to the slot. A backhanded move, toe drag, and Henry clears the zone. And now we're going to have a whistle here. It's going to be an interference call. And we'll see who it's against. It looks like. It's gonna be a Panthers power play. It's Nick Kerouac going to the box for the Demon Deacons, and so now, with a resurging offense, the Panthers have a man advantage for the first time today. Yeah, hopefully this power play could be a little turning point for the Panthers. Definitely need to take advantage of this and get something going. Get a couple of good shots. Cazola had great look on that last Panthers possession, but couldn't quite get it in there. And Jack Nemechus was really good in that last position as well. First time in 2022 on the power play, and it starts with a loss in the offensive zone, face-off circle, but Calkins keeps it at the blue line. Down to the corner, it's Cazola. Sawney in on the power play unit. The lone defenseman, he's out there with Cazola, Calkins, Henry, and Johnson. Sawney gets it to Cazola. Henry passes it up to the point where Johnson takes it. Now Henry back to Johnson, looking for a lane. Calkins at the faceoff dot. His shot blocked, didn't get through. Calkins moves in, another shot, and it's a save for Namikis in the crease. It's loose, and finally clearing the zone are the Deeks. That's a good start to the power play, just 30 seconds in for the Panthers. Yeah, while they weren't able to get any goals in, that was great to see that kind of pressure uh, being put on the Deacons by the Panthers. Here come the Panthers. Rob Cazola with some speed. He'll try to toe drag around Gebhardt, can't do so. Calkins will pick it up. Defensive zone for the Panthers. Johnson finds Cazola. 
He'll make a quick move. His man hits the ice and into the zone on sides. It's Sawney. He'll lose the puck. Now a battle in the corner. Calkins picks it up. Has Johnson at the point. Instead, he'll shoot deflection in front. Sawney couldn't get it on. Off the post. Sawney with a second chance. Cazola picks it back up. 47 seconds left in the power play for the Panthers. Henry back to Johnson at the point. Now a pass, a shot, and they score! Rob Cazola off the feed from Dakota Johnson, and the Panthers are on the board. It's 3-1. Great offensive execution there by the Panthers. Great passing, keeping control of the puck. Nice and steady and waiting for the right opportunity, and a great shot there by Rob Cazola to finish it off. And that's a big momentum goal for the Panthers as they are back within two now here. This is just what they needed. Uh, coming down 3-0 and have the power play and be able to get a lot of shots off and able to put one in. A fruitless power play would have been rough to see for High Point. And you might have seen them start to get a little sluggish out there, but a great pass from Dakota Johnson and a better finish from Cazola gets them on the board. That shot, good defensive play by Calkins to get a stick to that. And it goes high of the crossbar. Nine, 10 left in the first period here. That goal was Cazola assisted by Johnson and Ryan Henry. Moving into the zone, shot on and a six save made by Olweiler. He'll put it to the corner. Alex Brown in on the play. He'll clear the zone for the Panthers and now picked up in the neutral zone by Corwin. The defenseman for the Deeks. Backhanded into the neutral zone by Calkins. And Cazola wasn't ready for that pass from Kennedy. Excuse me, that's Arsenault. And now Henry in on the forecheck. Good play there by Ryan Henry at the circles. A shot and a, a great save made by Nemikis. Made with the blocker. And now it's a one-on-one -on -one opportunity for Gregoire. Has Gebhardt with him on the backhand. Gregoire moves in. A shot that goes high. Good defensive play by Christian Kuntz. And we're going to have a whistle here. I think that puck went out of play. Well, defense of Panthers seems to have waken up a little bit. Nice play there by Kuntz. And Oweiler making a great save uh, just a little bit ago. So hopefully we can see this more and get more uh, pressure in the defensive zone of the Deacons. Kerouac, big hit by Arsenault in the corner. Can't strip him of the puck, though, and Arsenault comes away with it. Ripochi Silva, Arsenault turns it over. At the top of the circles, the shot goes high of the crossbar. That was a good opportunity on the one-timer from Kerouac. Kuntz in the corner. That's played with a high stick by Dakota Johnson. No, he didn't touch it, they'll say, and he'll put it into the zone. Arm is up for icing, but waved off as it's played by Calkins for the Deacons. Kerouac bringing it into the zone. A shot blocked by Fallon. Way to put the body on the line. Nup lays a hit. And now Cazola with some speed. He's got Nup behind him and Kuntz on the other side. Takes a check. Nup picks it back up at the top of the circles. He'll fire a shot. It's blocked. Cazola, another shot off the post. Oh, that was a great chance for Cazola. Got a good bounce off the inboards. Unable to put it home, though. Jack Olson will lay it back to Paxton Nup. Near side circles. He'll fire a shot. Tried to pick a corner. And he missed it high. Kuntz fires, shoulder save made by Namikas. He didn't know where the puck was. And it's finally cleared all the way down by the Deacons, but this will be icing. Some nice shots there by the Panthers. It's the kind of presence you want to see, just have to see him execute it a little, bit, a little more, but there were some definitely good looks on that last possession. Prine off the faceoff win by Macheska. Kennedy lays a hit behind the play. This is going to be a delayed call against the Panthers. Touched up by Prine. It's going to be Logan Kennedy, uh, excuse me, Logan Kennedy going to the box. And it'll be another Demon Deacon power play. Yeah, the Panthers didn't do a lot, uh, so good last time on their last penalty kill. We'll see if they can. Hold down the forward and keep the pressure off Michael Olweiler. Roughing is the call on Logan Kennedy, excuse me, Kennedy. And this will be the second penalty kill for the Panthers. Face off one by the Deacons. Gregoire to the blue line. 
It's Rigby. He'll get it over to Howell, who cuts to the center after playing it for Gebhardt. Good defensive play that time by Calkins, able to break up that cutting pass. Gebhardt fires cross ice for Corwin. Corwin to the slot, pad save Olweiler off the deflection by Gregoire, and he'll cover. Great save there by Olweiler. This is what we need to see in this penalty kill. Just need to see stops, good defensive pressure, and Olweiler making these saves that he's been doing great, especially in the last game against the Deacons. 3-1 to one is the score here at the Winston-Salem Fairgrounds. Annex, first game of the new year for both teams, Wake Forest and High Point University. The goal for the Panthers by Rob Cazola. Andrew Gebhardt with two for the Demon Deacons. And Colin Licavoli with a power play goal for the Demon Deacons as well, and that is the third and most recent tally for the black and gold. Panther penalty kill, possesses the puck, and shoots it all the way down the ice. So that'll kill off a little bit more of this penalty. A minute 22 left in the box for Logan Kennedy. Gebhardt with a lot of speed across the red line. Gebhardt moves in, into the zone. He'll hold up at the circles, then spins back around, lost Nup for a moment. He'll play it to Gregoire. Sonny in on the play. He'll seal him off at the end boards behind the net. Howell picks it up. Good job by Henry to close off the passing lanes. Gets it down to Gebhardt. Tapping forward is Rigby. Pass broken up and another chance thwarted by Tyler Calkins. Great defensive play on the kill. 49 seconds left on the man advantage for the Deacons. That centering pass. Oh, what a deflection. Oh, Gregoire. Backhanded pass that gets a tip. Sneaks in the far side post, and it's 4-1 to one, Wake Forest. The Panthers were doing good, uh, disrupting the passing lanes, but at the end, they just couldn't come through. And another goal on Michael Oweiler, making it 4-1. to one. Panthers need to get out of this penalty kill and hopefully try and get a power play soon. And fire back, because that seems that is the only way the Panthers have been able to score so far, and hopefully they can do better than that. 5.36 left in the first period. It's 4-1 to one, Wake Forest. Good poke check that time by Kennedy, fresh out of the box. Fallon passes it off the end boards. He'll find Kuntz. Kuntz can't clear the zone. It was caught up in the feet of his forward. Fallon with a good play to seal off the four check for the Deeks. And now with it, is Alex Brown. He'll put a hit on it, the red line. Almost broke free Macheska. Brown still battling for the puck in the neutral zone. No icing into the Panthers zone. Under five to play here in the first period. Panthers down by three. Kuntz able to break up that pass, but a loose puck picked up by Ryan Henry. It's Henry and Johnson, two on two. Henry will hold up. Henry tries to fire a shot off, it's broken up by Licavoli, one of the goal scorers for the Deacons. And a turnover there by the Panthers. Henry and Johnson didn't get any help on that chance, and that one's gloved down by Olweiler out of midair, and he'll play it to the ice. Thought we'd hear a whistle there, and I don't know if Olweiler wanted one or not. Arsenal with a good play to get to a knee. Broken up, still in the crease, and Kuntz able to clear it. All the way down, arm is up for icing, but it will not have the legs. It's picked up. Nice clear there by Kuntz. That could have been bad news for the Panthers. And Calkins trying to clear the zone for the Deacons. Ices it the other way. So 4.07 left on the clock here. And an offensive zone draw for the Panthers. And if you're high point, you want to try to get back on the board and cut this lead back down to two before you go to the intermission. Yeah, you definitely don't want to allow any more points and definitely want to keep the offensive pressure going. Get, get some more shots off. Keep that pressure that we had seen a couple minutes earlier in the game but just relieve Michael Oweiler a little bit. Escala able to win the faceoff. Nup fires a shot, it goes high to the crossbar. Cazola was in front of the net. Nup in on the play, a big power forward. He'll get to the puck first, able to win the battle. Cazola took a stick up high, and he's gonna head off to the bench. Panthers are playing shorthanded in the offensive zone right now. Nup doing everything to win that puck battle. Cazola gets off, Kennedy takes his place on the ice, comes in and immediately throwing the body around. Paxton Nup. With the puck, he'll play it back to Aiden Pageant. Pageant shoots it for Escala, who at the blue line won't get everything on it. Now Olsen can't play the puck. Pageant on the back check, lays down a shot on, 
Pat save Olweiler, it goes behind the cage. Centering pass broken up by Ryan Henry, putting his body on the line. Ryan Henry was down and out to make that save defensively. And now he's back into play offensively, dancing into the zone. to get across the blue line. Henry at the circles, he'll fire a shot that flutters into the corner harmlessly. Three minutes left on the clock here. Able to keep it in at the blue line for a moment is Logan Kennedy. And now in the neutral zone, Jack Olson. His pass broken up. Arsenault dances around a man. Jack Olson can't win that race to the puck. It's picked up by Kerouac. He'll rim it around the boards. Johnson on the other end. Gets to it for the Panthers. But turns it over trying to find Arsenault. Good defensive play by Padge and able to strip what could potentially have been a breakaway if he was beaten. Looks like there's a lone stick on the ice over there on the right side of the rink. That shot was a rocket off of the stick of Jennings Lobel, but it went high of the crossbar. Cutting in towards the crease is a Demon Deacon. That's Sam Howell. That pass will go to the point instead. Good hit by Henry. A pass towards the slot. Nobody home. That one's off the glass. Save made by Olweiler. Blakely plays it off the boards. Demon Deacons will get off for a line change with under two to play. Nice move by Pageant. He'll get it to Henry on the boards. Plays it back to Cazola. He'll hold up. Tries to get it to Pageant. Couldn't do so. And now it's Gregoire. Gregoire. Who has the most recent goal in this game. He'll play it off the boards for Licavoli. Licavoli wins the puck battle. Can't get that pass in the zone at the blue line. Circling around is Blakely. He'll play it to his defensive partner, Licavoli, turns it over. And now Escala off the boards. Cazola, one-on-one, -on -one, he'll take a hit, loses the puck. And hauled down, that's going to be a penalty on the Demon Deacons, Blakely. Pretty easy call right in front of the official. And this will be a Panther power play for the last 69 seconds of the period. Yeah, pretty blatant penalty there. Well, so the Panthers are back with another power play, and the only time they were able to score and really get a lot of good offensive pressure in this game was on their last power play. So they really need to execute well and try and get a goal and cut this lead to two. You're absolutely right. This may only be the first period, but this is a crucial juncture in this hockey game. High point trying to get back within two goals. Power play one for one on the day for the Panthers so far. That one slapped all the way around the boards. Can't be kept in by Calkins. And Johnson will pick it up in the defensive zone. 60 seconds left in the period. Ryan Henry finds Alex Sani. In a two on two with Rob Cazola. Sani moves in. He'll dangle behind the cage. Nobody at the near side point. Johnson skates over. He'll pick it up. Kept in cleanly. Henry, near side circles. History pass. Cazola, a shot save made by Namikis. And he'll cover. Caught the puck between his pads, and with 36 seconds left, we'll have an offensive zone draw for the Panthers. That was a great opportunity there for Cazola to get on the board for his second of the game. Yeah, definitely a good look there from Cazola. Definitely want to keep those looks like that. Can't complain with that at all. Just a better save by Namikas, and that's what we've been seeing from him throughout this game. I like Cazola trying to go five hole there. I also like the entry pass to the slot from Ryan Henry in that situation. Cazola. Comes away with the puck off the draw. Tries to make a corner shot. And on the rebound, he can't do so. Got a shot on goal. Pad save was made and couldn't finish off the second chance. Cazola with the puck on the far side boards. Cazola still moving. Cross ice pass. Henry slings it back to Johnson. His shot blocked. Deflected in front. It can't find the net. Now Cazola picks it back up. Cazola on the backhand. He'll circle back around. Nine seconds left. Cazola finds Henry, gets it to the slot. Sonny a tip and kept out by Namikas for a moment. We'll see. Where's the goal? They score! They score Rob Cazola at the buzzer. Wow. Nice play there by Rob Cazola. He is really keeping the Panthers in this game for the first period. He had a great period, two goals already, and that was perfect. Just keeping the pressure on the Deacon goal, goalie and... Uh, not relenting. They took advantage of the power play that they had ending up the period, and this is just what they needed. They may put a second back on the clock here. Namikas has already left the ice, but Ryan Henry 
and Sifringer for the Deeks are in the penalty box, and now they're going to open the doors back up and let them go out. What an end to the first period. High Point able to get back on the board, cut the lead back down to two. End of the first period. It's 4-2 to two Demon Deacons, but the Panthers have some momentum courtesy of two power play goals from Rod Pozzola. We'll take a break for the first intermission, and when we come back with a fresh sheet of ice, it'll be the second period of action here in the Winston-Salem Fairgrounds Annex. Don't go anywhere.
We are back here at the Winston-Salem Fairgrounds Annex for the second period of hockey between the High Point Panthers and the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. I'm Graham Tuck with Luke Artizone. Panthers down 4-2 to two as we enter this period, but it was 4-1 to one before a last-second buzzer-beating goal from Rob Cazola, his second on the game, both on the power play. Power play 2-2 two for two for the Panthers so far today. And we will start this period with 4-on-4 four four hockey. Roughing calls assessed to both, looks like, Siffringer and Ryan Henry at the end of the period. And the Deacons win the draw. We're underway for the second period. Shots on goal, 10-9 to nine in favor of the Panthers in that first period. With speed, it's Greg War. Puck caught up in the feet of Sawney, but he'll come away with the puck. That was a dangerous chance for the Deacons right out of the gate. They opened the first period with a quick goal, trying to do the same in the second. Shot from Dakota Johnson was deflected off of a Demon Deacon stick and out of play. So we'll have an offensive zone draw with 1938 left to go in the second period here. A minute 40 left on the clock in the four on four frame. Phase off one by the Deacons. They've been pretty good in that category so far today. As we get this period started, and Gebhardt races into the zone for the Demon Deacons. What do you think that High Point needs to try to focus on, Luke, if they want to keep crawling back into this game down by two now? Yeah, for starters, they need to stay out of the penalty box. That's been killing them. Uh, penalty kill has not favored them in this game. Uh, Deacons have utilized that very well, and twice, actually, uh, for two of their goals. And the power play, they just need to keep sticking to it. When they get those opportunities, they just need to take advantage of it. Cazola has done really good for them. Uh, scoring two, two for two on the power play. So if the Panthers can continue that, they can crawl their way back into this game. The special teams are going to play a big part in this game for sure, as they have already. Nup aggressively on the back check, unable to strip the puck from the Deeks. That shot is a glove save by Oldweiler. Couldn't catch it cleanly, though. And the Deacons still with possession in the offensive zone. Good poke check by Fallon. And CK, Christian Kuntz, will come away with it. He'll get it into the neutral zone. And it goes right through the wickets. Colin Licavoli will let it slide back to the crease of Jack Namikis in net for the Deeks. Good forecheck there by Rob Cazola, putting a hit onto Licavoli. And still on the forecheck are the Panthers. Dakota Johnson joining up on the attack. Deeks will break out now, though, and it's picked up on the near side by Jennings Lobel. A shot, shoulder save, Oldweiler, rebound, and another great save by Oldweiler. Still loose, and he'll cover it up. Laying spread eagle is Michael Oldweiler, and he starts this period strong with a great save. There we go. That's the save we want to see by Michael Oldweiler and the Panthers coming off the first period with a nice goal to cut it to a two-point lead. Now Michael Oldweiler making some great saves. This is the kind of momentum that the Panthers need. Now if they can get a power play and execute on that, that would be great for them. And they need to start executing at even strength as well. The power play has been great, but... You don't know how many more chances like that Wake Forest is going to give you. Definitely not something you'll want to rely on throughout the game to win. Out of the box are Siffringer and Henry. Siffringer will head to the bench for Durant. Henry back on the ice. A big hit at the defensive blue line. Garrett Escala throwing the body around. That's great to see from Escala. We'll talk about that more in a second as that shot from the far circles is a save by Olweiler. Pressure in the zone for the Demon Deacons. Durant in the corner. Escala, that's about the first Big hit that we've seen him put on since back at the beginning of the season when he laid a man out at University of North Carolina Chapel Hill. Ended up getting a concussion and missed about a month or two of time. Back on the ice, he's played a bit more conservatively since his return. And good to see that kind of physical play from number 23 in black. Moving in is the defenseman for Wake Forest. That's Licavoli and... Christian Kuhn's able to partially block that shot. And then he'll chip the stick out of Licavoli's hands as Michael Olweiler covers. Yeah, as you were touching on there with the Scala, we want to see the Panthers being more physical, offense and defense, making those big hits and just trying to out-physical Wake Forest. Being a physically dominant team will certainly get you some brownie points as the game goes along. And it will pay off on the scoreboard eventually as well. Linesman Schwartz drops the puck. And in the corner, Pageant 
finds Logan Kennedy. He'll clear the zone. Picked up at center ice by Anderson. Big hit by Majeska on the puck carrier in the offensive zone. And a trip behind the play. No call. Ryan Majeska was swept off his feet. And now the game's getting a little bit more chippy here in the second period. Alex Brown in on the forecheck. Kennedy lays a hit near side boards. I see a big hit after big hit. But that was definitely a bad miss call there. That shot almost found the near side post from a funky angle. Looking for deflection in front, pad save, Olweiler. Oh, that was a great chance. Almost getting it through the five hole was Stockton, who's the extra forward for Wake Forest, the 13th. Big hit there on Logan Kennedy. Kept in the zone by the Panthers. Logan Kennedy can't get in on the four check. Dancing around his man is Pageant, and that could have been called a slash on Stockton. No call though, we play on. In the offensive zone, a great pass looking for Escala. Cazola nearly had an assist. And now it's one on one the other way. Shot from the circles, off the crossbar. Oh, that was a great snipe that time from the captain, Gregoire, but he couldn't pick the corner well enough. And now we've got a whistle here. We're gonna see what this is for. Not quite sure exactly what happened there, but it looks like we're going back down towards the Panthers' offensive end, so no complaints. Yeah, I mean, the Panthers will take it. Every opportunity they can get. Howell pleading his case with the officials. And it doesn't seem like they know what's going on either. Yeah, so There's a penalty up on the board to the Demon Deacons. Wow. With that it's going to be Tryman serving the penalty. The only thing I can think of here is a bench misconduct or six men on the ice. Well, that's perfect for the Panthers. Too many men is the call from the public address here at the Winston salem Fairgrounds Annex. So the two-for-two two power play for the Panthers will look to go three-for-three. Three. Face off, one by the Panthers. High point with possession in the offensive zone. Cazola at the circles, looks for a cross ice pass. Henry was there on the back door. Good stick check from Cazola and a great keep from Johnson. Power play goes on. Calkins at the circles, a shot, pass save, rebound is there. Calkins picks it back up. Johnson at the blue line. Far circles, it's Cazola. Johnson tapping for it, he'll get it back from Cazola. Near side circles, it's Calkins now. Back to Johnson, a slap shot, gets through traffic, pass save is there and the rebound leaks all the way out to Cazola at the top of the circles. 35 seconds gone in this power play for High Point. Henry finds Johnson back to Henry. Sawney in front of the net. Henry at the point. No Johnson. Back to Henry. Wanted Calkins all the way across ice. Johnson a shot. Oh, Namikas had no idea where that was. And Henry fires a shot that goes through the ice. Sawney's being held. No call. That one gets blocked before it even got to the slot by Gebhardt. And now a shorthanded two on two. And that is another missed call this time in favor of the Panthers. Johnson should have been called for a trip pad save. No blocker made by Olweiler. And the Panther power play will reset. 48 seconds left on the man advantage. Johnson spins around the captain Gregoire. Johnson will cover the puck. And that's a hand pass intentionally by Johnson. I think he just wanted the whistle. Oh boy, that was a weird sequence. A missed call on the offensive end for the Panthers. Sonny was laying on his stomach in the slot and his man was laying flat on top of him. And then the other way, Johnson got his stick tangled up in the skates of Gebhardt. Yeah, not really sure no what call was either way. There. Defensive zone draw won by Calkins. 35 ticks left on the power play here for the Panthers. Big opportunity to cut the lead down to one. Sonny will start the breakout. Gets it to Cazola. Chips it to Nup at the red line. He'll set back up. 25 seconds left. Bad pass by Nup. And now it's a two-on-one. Getting in on the back check is Calkins. What a save made by Olweiler there. And is it in? No goal, they'll say. Close one there. Very fortunate that Michael Olweiler was able to make that save for the Panthers. That was about as well constructed of a back check as I've seen from the Panthers all year long. And Olweiler holding his post, able to keep that puck out. And... He is the reason the Panthers are still down two and not three. 
Yeah, great back check there. And touching on the Panthers' offense in their last possession, they had some good puck movement and great looks, but they were just were not able to execute. Uh, they need to be able to take advantage of this because I don't know how many more power plays they're going to get. And they were good so far, but just not able to put one in. There you see on the Wake Forest bench, the officials are conferring with the Wake Forest coaches. And now the Orange Bands are going to skate back to center ice. And it looks like this faceoff is going to be in the neutral zone. So no goal officially, still the call. And coming away with the faceoff are the Deacons. And that will be the end of the Panther power play as a tripping call will go against the Panthers. So we'll play 10 seconds, excuse me, 9 of 4 on 4 hockey. Before Tryman will be released from the box, it's Hunter Arsenault going to the box. Two minutes for tripping off the faceoff. See if the Panthers' defense can hold up in this, during this penalty kill. Much more quiet in terms of goal scoring, second period at least so far. Four on four period starts. Glove saved by Oldweiler. Oh boy, that was a rocket of a wrist shot. And it looked like it might have caught a deflection in front as well. Able to hold on to it though and made it look easy too. A nice save again by Olweiler. And another save by Olweiler at the very end of the four on four period. So that will end the even strength opportunity for the Panthers. It'll be a minute and 50 seconds of power play time for the Demon Deacons. We're out shooting the Panthers 17 to 12 so far. And in the period, they're out shooting them eight to two. At the blue line, moving in, a shot, pad saved by Olweiler, loose in the slot, and Nup will come away with it. No, he gets stripped of the puck by Gregoire. Gregoire moving around the back of the goal. Gregoire still has it. Being fought off by Nup. Great physical play from number seven in black at the blue line. Pass intercepted. Calkins going the other way. One man to beat. Calkins with some speed, shorthanded. He'll hold up, and he's hauled down, hit the ice. No call. Might have been a bit of a slip up from Calkins. Back to the blue line in the Deacons offensive end. It's Licavoli. That pass, good interception by Calkins again, and he'll clear it all the way down. Halfway done is the Demon Deacon power play here. They're two for two so far. Licavoli moves in. Koontz can't win the race to the puck. It's sealed off at the corner boards, excuse me, at the blue line by Blakely. Coming away with the puck is Gebhardt. Fallon playing defense, able to block that pass. Oh, what a play by Fallon. Short-handed on the penalty kill. And he's just saved a goal there. Gebhardt wasn't able to pick a corner, tried the pass, and a great breakup by 21. Gebhardt, how dangerous he is on hat trick watch. Moves into the zone. 20 seconds left on the power play. Gebhardt to the blue line. Rigby throws it back to Gebhardt, who can't pick it up. That's a hit into the boards. Sonny able to hold up, though, and avoid most of the contact. Puck battle, near side, boards. That's a big hit by Sonny that time. And another call after the play. And as soon as Arsenault is released from the box, we're going to have another call. And this one's going to be on Macheska. And they might both go. Getting chippier out here on the ice. Both teams have been a lot more physical, especially in the second period. Macheska and Gebhardt to the box. And I'll tell you what, in this situation, that's a win for Macheska because he draws the penalty from Gebhardt. I couldn't see what exactly happened in the corner boards. The view was blocked by the boards themselves, but unless Gebhardt took the first penalty, and then Macheska went after him afterwards. That's a win for Macheska because you take the most talented player from Wake Forest off the ice for two minutes. Yeah, Panthers have been doing pretty well during this penalty kill of holding down the Ford and Michael Oweiler making plays and making saves. Just need to be able to keep this up now that it's going to be a four on three, it looks like. Might be four on four. I'm still not sure what. The official call is going to be. We'll wait to hear it from the public address announcer, Steve Marino. A 
11.52 on the clock in the second period. We are still 4-2, Demon Deacons in the lead, same way we ended the first period. Two minutes are up on the board to Gebhardt. Still nothing on the board yet for Macheska. And there's gonna be another man heading to the box for the Demon Deacons. It's Grossman who's gonna serve a penalty additionally. So this is gonna be a five on four, a power play for the Panthers. So Gebhardt had the first penalty then Macheska went after him after the fact and penalties after the play on both parties. So this is definitely a win for High Point. The Panthers are gonna get a power play out of this. Yeah, Panthers will take this all day. Getting the best player out of there and putting him in the penalty box and going back to the power play, which has been the best thing they've been doing all day is executing in the power play and scoring. And on top of that, Gebhardt is a big part of the penalty kill for the Demon Deacons. So you take one of their penalty killing forwards out of the equation in this case. Yeah, definitely huge. Panthers really are gonna need to execute here. Done great on the defensive zone. Now just need to keep the pressure going on offense and get some good looks. An interesting note is that so far the Panthers have gone to just one line on the power play. Double minor assessed to Gebhardt. Double minor for roughing and Macheska is assumedly going to get a roughing call as well. And that puck goes into the high point bench, so we'll have a draw. But as I was saying, the Panthers have gone to just one line on the power play today as opposed to the normal two that they run. Sonny, Cazola, Henry, Johnson, and Calkins have been the only players to play ice time on the power play for the Panthers so far today. This is now their fourth opportunity. Yeah, they've done pretty well so far, so. Cazola shakes sense. off a hit. He'll dangle through. Cazola all the way into the zone. He'll hold up at the top of the circles. Thought we might see him try to go coast to coast there, but he'll set up the power play wisely. 115 left on the power play here. Calkins near side circles, he'll hold up. Up to the high slot, Johnson will slap it back to him. Calkins tries to pick a corner, it's off the glass, it'll come back to him on the carom. Calkins will set it back up behind the net. That pass picked off and unable to be kept at the blue line by Johnson. Rigby clears the ice for the Deeks. Fresh set of legs on the penalty kill for Wake Forest. 50 seconds left on the power play, 1040 in the period. With Gephardt out, Panthers really going to need to do something here. Oh, Cazola moving into the zone with a lot of speed and a lot of skill. He'll try to backhand it back to Sonny, who does a good job just to get it back to Cazola in the corner. 30 seconds left on the power play. Finds Calkins at the point. Now Johnson, other side of the point, near the bench. Calkins off the boards to Henry. Bottom of the circles. He'll put the brakes on at the top of the circles. Now Calkins high slot over to Johnson. Once the pass, couldn't settle the puck. And that slap shot deflected by Cazola. Couldn't get it on goal. And the Deben Deacons can't clear the zone. Henry with a little bit of a hit behind the play. He'll take his man down. But the Demon Deacons will clear the zone. And the arm is up. And this is going to be another coincidental penalty. As soon as one ends, another begins. And that's the third or fourth time that's happened today. It's going to be Ryan Henry along with Blakely for the Demon Deacons going to the box. And also to note is that Gebhardt is still in the box for another two minutes. Yeah, that's huge for the Panthers. Clearly the strongest presence on the Deacon team right now. So the Panthers need to make sure to execute and get some things done while he is off in the penalty box. He's serving that double minor. He had Grossman serve the first part of it to be released and get things back to even strength. So Henry's going to get hit with a cross check and I couldn't quite hear the call for the Deeks. This is going to be another four on four period. Panthers defensive zone, they'll win the draw 
and start the breakout. Three on two if they hustle. Christian Kuntz leads the way on the backhand. He'll fight off a check from Corwin. And now Nupp has it behind his own goal. Being bodied by Rigby. Couldn't find a cutting arsenal. Now Fallon, high slot, his shot blocked and able to be kept in the zone by Nupp. Another blocked shot, that time by Rigby. And now that still won't clear the zone. Kuntz at the slot, he scores! Oh, what a snipe from Christian Kuntz! Oh my lord, that was a heck of a shot from 92 and the Panthers are back within one. Christian Kuntz with a great score there. Really well executed offense. Great speed starting out there by Kuntz and just able to knock that one in. That was an absolute snipe that has gotten the Panthers right back into this game. Only down 4-3 and definitely seeing a presence uh, without Gebhardt on the ice. Deeks win the draw. They've seen their lead dwindle from three all the way down now to one. Into the zone are the Demon Deacons. Fallon comes away with it. The four check was a big part of that goal. Fallon hits the ice and the Deacons will come away with it. Oh, Arsenault got caught out of the play and now the Demon Deacons into the zone. Moving around and a great defensive play by Pageant to break up that chance for Wake Forest. 53 seconds left of four on four hockey. Arsenault tries to get to Fallon. He stood up at the red line. And Demon Deacons will retain the puck and look to get into the zone. They do. It's on sides. It's Kerouac. A shot and a save by Olweiler. Right into the chest on the numbers. And he'll cover it up for a defensive zone draw. Olweiler standing strong. And really, uh, ever since Gephardt has gone out, has not faced too much pressure from the offense of the Deacons. So it's very a it's very clearly a different team when he's on the ice compared to when he's not. Yeah, you can definitely feel the offensive pressure going down from the Deacons. Namikas hasn't had the most stellar of days in the crease so far for Wake Forest. 10 saves on 13 shots. That shot, bad save made by Olweiler, another one to his tally, and Cazola will come away with the puck. Strong four check, that time by Jennings Lobel. Olsen puts the brakes on with a little hezzy move, and now Rob Cazola into the zone. Still four on four hockey for the next 12 seconds. Cazola will bring it back into the neutral area of the ice. Panthers are off sides, they'll touch up as Pageant just dumped it into the corner. Henry and, and Blakely out of the box. Yep, you're right, Luke, it's back to five on five hockey. In the offensive zone for the Deacons. That's another block shot for Aiden Pageon. Henry drops to a knee on the ice, and now Jack Olson brings it into the zone. Jack Olson at the circles. He'll fire a pass off. Oh, what a look from Jack Olson, but couldn't settle it on his stick. Escala unable to finish that play off. And now the other way, it's Kerouac. His shot, another save by Olweiler. Olweiler's been great so far here in the second. Olson plays the puck down to the ice. He'll backhand it to Nupp who fishes it over to Ryan Henry. Off the boards for Nup, chipped along, and put back towards the Demon Deacons offensive zone. They'll hold up for just a moment before Aiden Pageant gets it into the offensive end, and the Panthers are off sides. And finally, Andrew Gabhart will be released from the box for the Demon Deacons. After a some sloppy defense and a slow start for Michael Ohau in the first period, defense has really come out of here looking strong. Now, part of that would, would have to do with Gephardt being out, but nonetheless, and great he's job. back on the ice now. Fresh set of legs for 29 in gold, and right away, the Demon Deacons have a chance. Gebhardt with the donut stick, he scores. Hat trick for Andrew Gebhardt, and it's five to three Demon Deacons. Might have spoke a little too soon there. Gebhardt immediately making his presence known again right out of the penalty box. That's something that the Panthers were doing great uh, defending when he was not in, but now that he's back, some more trouble is gonna be there for Michael Olweiler in the Panther defense. And Gebhardt's just a guy who, on top of elite speed and puck handling, he has a shot placement that is just unparalleled. He can put it wherever he wants. 
And it's shown today as he has matched the Panthers' goal output with a hat trick today. But the Panthers are not out of it yet. 6.29 left to go in the second period here. The arm is up for the official. We've got a delayed call coming up, and Koontz is going to go after his man, Howell, after the play. And we're going to see what's going on here. Johnson is visibly frustrated with Christian Koontz. So we'll see what comes of this. Christian Koontz to the box for the Panthers. And going with him for the Demon Deacons is Sam Howell. And you've got to imagine that the reason Johnson was so frustrated with Koontz is that the Panthers might have had a power play chance if Koontz hadn't gone after his man after the play. Yeah, kind of a late hit there by Koontz that uh, was probably unnecessary and now put him into the box. And Alex Brown is heading to the box for the Panthers as well. That'll be another penalty kill. So that means that this is going to be at least a double minor on Christian Koontz. We'll play four on four for two minutes. And then it'll be a power play for the Demon Deacons. That much I can tell you. What the calls are, I'm not sure. And whether or not this is a four or five minute penalty is a big difference because if it's four minutes, then the power play's over if a goal is scored. But if it's five minutes, it would be a continuous power play for the Demon Deacons. But for now, we'll play four on four and get that sorted out in just a moment. Ten-minute major assessed to Christian Kuntz. And how he's still in the penalty box and not in the locker room, I'm not entirely sure. Wow, that's a big call there. Somehow still in the game, Christian Kuntz. But let's see if the Panthers can hold down the fort here. This will be a big opportunity for the Wake Forest power play coming up in a couple of moments. But for now, we're four on four. Sawney brings it into the zone from his defense position. A minute 38 seconds left in the four on four frame. Arsenault comes away with the puck. He'll get bodied off by Gebhardt. And Corwin will come away with the puck for the Demon Deacons. He'll good find to, Gregoire. Be good to see some offensive pressure here by the Panthers before it goes to four on three. Centering pass from Gregoire is blocked down by Arsenault. And now with some speed, it's Nicholas Fallon. His pass intercepted. He had Ryan Henry in front of him. Tried to dangle around a couple of men. In the high slot, a shot, it goes wide to the post. Oh, that was fortunate for the Panthers. Missed the net with a great look. Did Wake Forest. Now Sawney will wheel it into the zone. Slap shot and swallowed up by Namikis. And we'll have an offensive zone draw. 50 seconds left in four on four hockey. Not a bad look there by, so by Sawney though. Good shot, better save. And 50 seconds left until it's gonna be a penalty kill for the Panthers. So see if they can get something done before then. Four on the ice for the Panthers. It's Nup, Escala, Cazola, and Calkins. Four forwards on the ice. So they're clearly trying to make something happen offensively before we go to a shorthanded chance for the Panthers. Now Calkins has the puck in the neutral zone. Panthers do not have numbers. Cazola behind the play will watch Calkins dump it in. Cazola will field the puck at center ice, finds Calkins cross ice. He'll dump it into the zone where Escala's in on the forecheck. Puck finds its way to Anderson. And now wheeling with it, it'll be Gallon. He'll turn it over, and in the defensive zone, it's Calkins. Alex Brown being set to come out of the box in about eight seconds. Turnover, neutral zone, and a glove save by Olweiler. He'll able to bat it down out of midair. And Brown is back along with Sam Howell. So we're playing five on five. Cazola, oh. oh, that might be a penalty shot. At the very least, a tripping call. Cazola would have had a breakaway if it wasn't for that trip, and that is a penalty that Anderson will happily take for the Demon Deacons. To be completely honest with you, I'm not quite sure why Christian Kuntz 
one of two things should be happening right now. Either the Panthers should be on a major penalty kill or Christian Kuntz should be in the locker room. I'm not entirely sure why one of those two things is not true, but he's in the penalty box serving a 10-minute misconduct, and the Panthers have a power play off of a tripping call against Anderson. Johnson, now Henry. His shot, save, rebound. Kozola in the slot, can't get it off. And the Deacons penalty kill will stay alive for a couple of moments. 15 seconds gone in the shorthanded Deacons shift. Now Cazola. Oh, made a man miss. And he'll get through. Makes another. Getting into the zone at Cazola. Trying to do it all himself on hat trick. Watch, he'll hold up. Finds Calkins. Gets it to Johnson. Nice slot. Hill. Shovel that one to Henry. Now Johnson again. Cazola. No, Calkins fires it right into the chest of Namikas and will have a face off to the near side circles. A minute 16 left on the clock here. Cazola is asking to be switched off with Hunter Arsenault. So he'll come onto the ice. And he is the only player that was not on the first power play line to find the ice during the power play so far. Panthers have gone with one power play line and have played with them the entire time they've been on the man advantage so far today. Yeah, I was going to say they should probably run the puck through Cazola on the power play offense, but it looks like that's not going to be an option right now. And if you recall, Cazola took a stick to the eye earlier in the game, went off to the bench, but he's appeared okay since then. Calkins can't body off a couple of Demon Deacons. Now a chance, shorthanded for Wake, and the trying to pick a corner is the captain, Gregoire. But Olweiler able to make that save. And with 49 seconds left, we'll have a face-off. 49 seconds left on the power play, that is. Defensive zone draw. And now the second power play line will come out for the Panthers. It's Nick Fallon, Hunter Arsenault, Paxton Nup, Garrett Escala, and Logan Kennedy. Arsenault wins the draw. And the Panthers coming away with it. Oh, they've got numbers. Logan Kennedy has a chance. One man to beat. And a great poke check that time by the lead defenseman, Licavoli. Yeah, Licavoli saving a possible go there. 30 seconds left on the power play. Good keep from Fallon. Over to Nup. Couldn't quite settle it. And that pass to Escala is broken up. And the Panthers will touch up. Fallon slings it into the zone. It's picked up by Licavoli, sealed off at the boards by Escala in the corner. It's Arsenault, 12 seconds left. Hit along the boards. Doing a good job on the penalty kill is Blakely. Four seconds left on the power play. And now Anderson will come out. That pass broken up and a good play by Gregoire to dump that one all the way down the ice. Oldweiler out of his crease to play the puck and a good job by the freshman netminder. A great play. As out of the box was Anderson, and now another chance. Oh, it's a chance for Gebhardt, and a backhanded chance, and it goes wide of the crease, couldn't get a shot off. What a dive by Kennedy, and it's in. Oh, I thought that Kennedy was able to get out in front of that pass and break it up, but it's another goal for Wake Forest at a crucial time in this game. It looks like it's going to be Gregoire with the second of the game, and it's 6-3. to three. Wow, I thought Logan Kennedy had it there. He made it look like he made a nice play there. And Oweiler with a great play coming out of the goal, but... That offense by the Deacons uh, still relenting, and Olweiler and the Panthers not able to stop it. And that'll put it to a 6-3 lead, which is not looking good for the Panthers as they have not been able to score uh, as of recent. And all of that starts with the Panthers not picking up Anderson out of the box. He went straight to the bench as soon as his penalty ended. And then coming off the ice, or excuse me, coming onto the ice as soon as Anderson got to the bench was a free-running Demon Deacon. And he started that offensive chance for the Deeks. Hit behind the play, hitting the ice is Jack Olson. Johnson will get it to Cazola. He'll take a stumble, and the Deeks will possess in their defensive end. Pagin gets it to the zone. Henry able to chip it into the zone on sides. Behind the net, it's Corwin. Three goal lead for the Deeks. The Panthers had cut it to one at four to three and since two unanswered by the Demon Deacons. 
We're approaching one minute to play in the second period. Good check that time from Olsen, and he'll throw a man in the boards. Chance in the slot, a shot, and a save by Olweiler. Oh, staring at the ceiling is Grossman, who had a great opportunity to make this lead four for the Demon Deacons, and he just shot it straight into the chest of Olweiler. Great save there by Olweiler, and a missed opportunity there by Grossman. Uh, wide open look, uh, shot it right into the chest of Olweiler, and Olweiler making the save to keep this uh, lead still to three. 57 seconds left in the second period. Shots on goal in this period alone. 17 to seven in favor of the Demon Deacons. Definitely something to keep in mind of as this period has definitely reflected that with the score. Two goals in this period for the Deeks, one for the Panthers. That one's backhanded into the attacking zone by Jack Olson. 36 seconds left in the frame. Macheska loses his stick, still throws a shot after the play. And Licavoli, his pass broken up by Kennedy with another diving play and another break up by Kennedy. Macheska still in the zone after retrieving his stick, able to keep possession for the Panthers. They'll turn it over behind the net. And now the Demon Deacons with a three on three chance. 15 left in the period. That shot is right on and Olsen comes away with it. Jack Olson. He shoots and a blocker save made by Namikas. Another backhanded chance by Olson at the buzzer. Is gloved down by Namikas and we'll head to the third period. Panthers trailing four to two coming into the period. Got on the board to start things, cutting the lead to one. But two goals in the late stages of the period make it a three goal lead yet again for Wake Forest. And the score six to three at the end of the second period. Graham Tuck, Luke Artizone will be back with the final 20 minutes of action here in the Winston-Salem Fairgrounds Annex. After we cut the ice, don't go anywhere.
20 minutes left here in the first game of 2022 for the Demon Deacons and the Panthers. I'm Graham Tuck. Luke Artizone beside me on the call for this game here at the Winston-Salem Fairgrounds Annex. It's Wake Forest in high point. And the Deacons lead this one by a score of 6-3. to three. The Panthers trailed 4-1 to one in the first period and had cut the lead all the way down to 1. They trailed 4-3 to three in the latter half of the second period and then two goals from Wake Forest made it a three-goal advantage yet again. So 20 minutes to crawl back. Three goals is the requirement for the Panthers if they want to force overtime against this very talented Demon Deacons team. Yeah, I thought the Panthers were going to be able to do something after they were only down 4-3. Uh, Gebhardt went out. And, and they had all the momentum, too. And it all, Yeah, it looked like it was going to be smooth sailing for the Panthers, but once Gebhardt came back in, he immediately made his presence known again and was able to score a goal. And that kind of set the Panthers back. And now they're going to have to try and claw from behind. Three goals left to go. Let's see what the Panthers' offense can do to start off this third period. The Deeks start the period with a face-off win. Cazola aggressively in on the four-check. And this is something to watch. How aggressive will the Panthers be as they attempt to come back from this three-goal deficit in the third period? Gregoire carries for the Demon Deacons, finds Howell. Has Gebhardt. Back to Gregoire. So Gebhardt on the back door. He can't get it inside the near post. Oh, that was a beautiful play. Just lacked the finish. Corwin fires it on in a blocker save by Olweiler. Still in the zone for the Demon Deacons. Panthers getting a little lucky on that last play. That should have been a goal. Four forwards on the ice for the Panthers. Escala, Cazola, Calkins, and Nup. Sawney, the lone defenseman. The mentality has obviously changed. Arm is up as the Deacons are off sides. Calkins picks up the puck behind Olweiler's cage. Now Sawney stands his man up, trying to put a hit on him in the defensive zone. Pass picked off by Ryan Henry, and the Panthers will repossess. Dakota Johnson at the blue line off the boards. Tries to find Henry, but it's too far out in front of him, and it's picked up by Licavoli. Licavoli. Brings it across the blue line. Gets past Arsenault. Dances past Sonny. And a save made by Olweiler. Sonny is going to hold him up behind the play. That pass picked off. Intended for Henry from Johnson. And Blakely will dump it into the corner. Well, Calkins will get it for the Panthers. And now a chance for the Panthers in the offensive zone. Henry couldn't find Johnson, who was streaking towards the blue paint. But that pass was broken up. Johnson backhands it back into the zone. And it's picked up by a Demon Deacon. That's a shame. Johnson had an open look there. Wish Henry could have gotten to him there. Might have resulted in the goal. It was a great deflection on the play by the Deacons defense. Fallon gets held up by a linesman. And fortunately, Arsenault able to clear that puck from the zone. It's dumped back in for the Demon Deacons by Lobel. About two and a half gone here in the third period. Fallon lost the puck at center ice. And that plays off sides. Some nice defensive stops there by the Panthers. Definitely want to see some more offensive pressure as Michael Olweiler is not going to be able to keep this up the rest of the game with these kind of shots. A very different outing for Olweiler compared to the last time he played the same Demon Deacons team. 62 saves on 66 shots in a game that ended up as a tie. Yeah, what an outing that was for Michael Olweiler. Pageant into the zone on sides. Has Macheska in the slot. Tries to get it to him. Still loose in the blue paint. And a Deacon will come away with it. Logan Kennedy blows his man up at the circles. And the puck is still in the zone for the Panthers. Physicality playing a part in Logan Kennedy's game today. Macheska trying to fish it out of the scrum. Fallon is there to hold at the point. But he can't do so. And that'll be shot all the way down on goal to Olweiler. Will throw it aside for Pageant. He'll backhand it back to Kennedy. That'll clear the zone. Picked up at the red line by Rigby. And that was a dangerous play there. And Puck still hasn't been completely controlled. Possession still being fought for. And Macheska will come away with it. Turns it promptly over. And Nup 
will come away with it once more. The Panthers finally with solid possession. Nick Fallon with the puck in his own end. Throws it to his defense partner, Aiden Pageant. Now Fallon. Off the boards to Nup. Lost it in his feet. Gets the red line and he'll throw it into the zone. Macheska off to complete the line change. The lone forward left on the ice from that line and Cazola takes his spot. Stretch pass for Gregoire. Gregoire, and a good poke check from Sonny to break up that play. Gregoire has been great today and a turnover for the Panthers. Calkins breaks up a play once and that shot couldn't pick a corner. Gebhardt was looking for his fourth. Moving in is Gregoire. That shot, pad save. Gebhardt on the rebound. Dances around, tried the wrap around, couldn't get a shot off. And another shot. And that one is held by Olweiler. Olweiler's looking good here in the third period so far. Making a flurry of saves there. We've got 1548 left in regulation. High point still down by three. Six to three, the score. Yeah, Demon Deacons relentless on offense. Shooting the ball, getting or shooting the puck and getting great looks. But Michael Olweiler standing strong. This defense has got to relieve him a little bit. And they need to get some more looks and more shots on offense. That's a great play from Paxton Nup to strip that puck at the blue line. No icing as the Deacons had touched that puck. And now Howell gets around Nup. And the puck in the offensive end for the Demon Deacons. Sawney holds off one man. Good poke check that time from Calkins. He'll throw it off the inboards. Around for Nup, who loses his stick. Can't body the puck out of the zone. Calkins will do that, though. Escala picks it up. Tried to drop it back for Cazola, but instead, it's Howell. Good poke check from Sawney. He's done that a couple times today. Pat saved by Olweiler on a shot that found its way into the crease. And now Johnson to Escala. No icing there. And then the defensive zone, it'll be the Demon Deacons. Johnson in strong on the forecheck. Can't be held in by Arsenault, but he'll dangle for a moment. Throw it back into the boards as Johnson touches up. Henry throws it back to Johnson. Pageant, good keep by Johnson at the blue line. That slap shot, couldn't find the net. It'll come all the way to pa Fallon, who pinches in, excuse me. Henry lost the puck to Howell, who gets around Arsenault and comes into the neutral zone. Panthers taking some far slap shots there. I want to see him get a little closer and get some more pressure there on the inside. Down by three, you want to get some net front presence and just put pucks to the net however you can get them. Alex Brown gets that puck to Hunter Arsenault. And we're going to have a whistle here. Looked like it might have been a hand pass. As the faceoff will come right in front of the Wake Forest bench. And the arm is up. That'll be icing. And so this will come down to the Panthers attacking zone. 13.55 left in the third period here. And the Panthers haven't been able to do much of anything to cut into this lead for Wake Forest. Yeah, at this point, if you're the Panthers, you're just wanting to get something on the board. Maybe try and cut it close. Seems like it's getting a little bit out of reach at this point, but I want to see if we can get the offensive pressure going and maybe get something in. Alex Brown with a good defensive play there. Able to keep the puck handler off the puck for just a moment. And Wake Forest retains possession. Fallon cancels a stick. That puck goes up into the air. Wake Forest brings it back down to the ice. Kerouac, a shot, and Oldweiler lost that puck. Fortunate it went over the crossbar. Demon Deacons couldn't get a shot on goal there. Shot from the blue line is deflected in front, and now it's a two-on-one for the Panthers. Getting back in on the back check, and that's offsides as a good poke check from Anderson. Able to strip Kennedy, and Macheska picked it up, brought it back into the zone. Man, that was a great chance potentially for the Panthers 
two on two with Kennedy and Macheska unable to finish it off. Yeah, another missed opportunity there, and those are the ones that we've seen the Panthers miss throughout this game. Ones that they're definitely going to need to execute on, especially going forward in the season. Face-off win for the Demon Deacons yet again. And now it's a three-on-one, but it's offsides. Oh, Calkins was the only man back there as Sonny had pushed up from his defensive position. And the Demon Deacons, as soon as one offsides thwarts a chance, the other does the same. Cazola, Escala, and Nup. The line out there for the Panthers with 13.06 left in the third period. Face off won by Cazola and the Panthers. Calkins will gain the red line. Dumps it around the boards. Kept in by Cazola. Escala fights for the puck, but coming away with it are the Panthers. Nup with a good poke check, and now Cazola, no Escala with some speed, tried to move around the defender Corwin but he's stripped of the puck by a good poke check. Nup dumps it to the opposite corner, nobody over there. And now Calkins intercepts a pass in the neutral zone. Escala touches up, he was off sides, and the Demon Deacons have the puck, looking to start the breakout in their own end. Panthers forechecking aggressively here, as the third period is now nearly halfway over. Deficit still stands at three for high point. Yeah, been able to hold up on defense, but still not getting the offensive pressure that we were seeing earlier. That was an odd looking play as Durant hit the ice for the Deeks and a chance for the Demon Deacons unable to be capitalized upon. Johnson brings it into the zone for the Panthers. Oh, what a move by DJ. Moving it on the goal. Oh, that would have been a great move from Dakota Johnson unable to finish it off with a snipe. And now the Deeks the other way. Three on two. Shot. And it's blocked in front by his own man. That one was off the stick of Gregoire. And it looks like the net has come off its pegs. Oh my lord, that was one heck of a move by Dakota Johnson on that attack. He had a sharp angle, got the shot off, but couldn't quite get it on goal. Still, regardless, that was, <laughs> that was a sight to see. Really was impressive. Seen a couple of those from the Panthers offense, but most of the time not resulting in any goals. But nonetheless, Dakota Johnson, great look there. Just unable to capitalize. Face off, one in the defensive zone by high point. Sonny. No icing. Namikas picks it up in the defensive end. Henry couldn't break up that play, and now it's Licavoli. Drops it for Gregoire, tries to leave it on goal, and Olweiler will cover. Some nice passing there to start off, but looks like they lost it a little bit there at the end, and Olweiler able to come down with it. Panthers really struggling to get shots off and to just give any sort of offensive pressure. It seems like they are always in the defensive zone. But Michael Olweiler holding strong this period so far. The offensive chances for the Panthers have been short-lived so far in the third period. Give credit to the Wake Forest back check where it's due. They've done a great job. But now it's Christian Kuntz bringing it into the zone. Tries to drop it for Alex Brown. Can't find him. And now it's a two-on-one for the Demon Deacons the other way. Fallon back on defense, he'll break up the pass and stop that chance for the moment. A sweeping shot on goal, finds Olweiler's stick and he'll make the save. And now Stockton. Backhanded shot in front, still loose in the crease and Olweiler will cover yet again and the arm is up. We're gonna have a penalty after this play and I think it's gonna be against High Point. Yeah, a lot of guys clustered right there. But Puck is not able to go into the goal and the High Point Panthers escape without another one. Macheska's gonna go to the box for the Panthers with a cross check. And the Demon Deacons power play will get back out onto the ice. 10.47 left to go in the third period. Seen Macheska getting a little bit of penalty trouble uh, earlier in this game. And now it's gonna be another penalty kill and see if the Panthers can hold strong and 
at least not let this lead get worse. First action on the score sheet here in the third period. No goals or penalties until almost the halfway point. Been a very slow final frame. A shot on, deflected, and it goes high of the crossbar. Oh, that was a good chance for the Deacons power play. Arsenault's gonna take a check out in front of the net from Kerouac, high slot. Now to the near circles. It's Lobel who has it. Lobel, good check that time by Nup Fallon. And Fallon will clear the zone. Half a minute gone on the penalty to Macheska. Licavoli brings it across the blue line, the red, and now the other blue. Licavoli moving in at the slot. He'll hold up and set up the power play action. Shovel pass from Blakely. And a bit of a lazy one at that. Gregoire finds Blakely. Couldn't get it on the tape, and Calkins with a good check to keep his man off the puck. Calkins very quietly had a great game so far today. That's a great save from Olweiler. Oh, what a pass from Gregoire to Licavoli, and Olweiler moving from left to right, able to shut down that chance without a problem. Arsenault's off sides, so the Panthers will have to touch up shorthanded. Great looking play by the Deacons. The only thing missing was the goal from an outstanding play from Olweiler. Yeah, he had it exactly right there. Luke and now Gregoire with another chance. This time he won't pass, and that one went about 25 feet into the air at least. And now another chance in front of the net on the power play by the Deacons, and Kerouac couldn't put it home. Kerouac, another shot and another save from Olweiler. Johnson puts on a good hit to Corwin. Henry with another one at center ice. And a couple more seconds will take off the power play. This puck batted down at the red line by Lobel. Henry seals his man off, and out of the box is Macheska. This is a three on two for the Panthers. Nup brings it into the zone. Macheska dances around a couple of Demon Deacons, but he lost the puck in the process, and now Wake Forest the other way. Henry with a check in the neutral zone, and Pageant into the zone. Good poke check by Pageant. That'll get it to the crease. And sticking it away is Namikis. Macheska, centering pass. Nup, a shot and a blocker save from Namikis. Oh, that was nearly a goal. Able to get high point back in this one almost. Sawney with the puck still in possession off the back glass. That was an odd bounce. It fell softly to the ice. And Macheska couldn't get it on his tape in the, in the slot. Really close goal there. Almost able to cut this lead down, but not quite yet. Behind the net, five-man pile up. Cazola comes with the puck to the far side boards. Cazola still fighting for possession, and Corwin will win it away from him. In the neutral zone, Pageant will get it back in, and that puck goes out of play almost all the way to the Wake Forest locker room. 7.39 left here in the third period, high point has not let this lead for the Demon Deacons stretch to four, but they haven't been able to chip away at that three goal deficit so far in this period. Neither team getting on the scoreboard here and only one penalty, it belonged to Macheska. Panthers were able to kill it off. Thought the Panthers had a good look there and were about to score, but unable to do so. And I give credit to Namikas. That was a good blocker save. But the problem for the Panthers after the first period has been getting shots on goal. Their shots on goal in the first period outnumber shots on goal in the second and third combined so far. And Wake Forest puts a shot on to Olweiler, who will swallow it up for a stoppage. And that's been the story of the game. Great looks on Olweiler and him stopping him. Centering passes there, it's broken up by Arsenault. And going all the way around with the puck is Fitzpatrick. Haven't seen that top line of Howell, Gregoire, and Gebhardt on the ice in about five minutes for the Demon Deacons at least. Henry into the zone. On his backhand, he'll hit the ice, no call. Along the boards, he'll lose control. Macheska with a good stick play. 
in the offensive zone to keep it in. Henry chases for the puck behind the net. And he'll be stood up for a moment. Big hit there on Ryan Henry. Alex Brown in on the back check. That's a save made by Allweiler on a shot from the blue line. And now Henry will come with the puck. Dumps it into the corner. Brown in chasing on the play. Macheska near side corner. He won't be able to completely possess the puck. Logan Kennedy, that's that pass down at the red line. With only a little bit over six minutes left, I'd like to see the Panthers get some more pressure and get a couple more shots off as this game seems like it's out of reach at this point. Pass deflected. It'll be picked up by the Deeks in their own zone. Alex Brown in on the four check, can't come away with the puck. Pass to himself off the boards. That was a nifty little move from Tryman. Fallon rims it all the way around where Nup eagerly awaits at the other end. He'll play it back to Pageant. That's turned over, and Nup able to win that race to the puck. Beats Tryman to it. Three on two for high point. Nup moving in, shot blocked, puck still loose, and Kennedy will pick it up. And that's going to be a penalty after the play on Paxton Nup. And there is a injured player for the Demon Deacons after that play. Nup is being escorted to the locker room. So it appears that this chase for High Point to get back into this game has just gotten a little bit more difficult. There is a, there is a player entering the penalty box for Wake Forest as well. Chauvin enters the box for the Deeks. Paxton Nup has been sent off. His day is done. Five minutes already up on the board to Pax. Thought it was going to be a four on, or five on four there for the Deacons, but it looks like Chauvin is going to be in the penalty box, so it might be four on four. You're right. It is Chauvin in the box. Two minutes. Let's take a listen. So Shelvin gets two minutes for roughing. Dakota Johnson is serving a penalty for Nup. Nup, five minute major and a game misconduct. So Johnson will serve the five minute major. And when he comes out of the box, there will be 30 seconds left in the third period. High point playing four on four hockey for the next two minutes. And then with 3.30 left in the third, the Demon Deacons will have three minutes of power play time, major power play time at that. Gazzola slashed and obviously hampered by that play. Getting back in it defensively though. He's gonna give a cross check to Kerouac. And that is a joke of a call. Cazola obviously was slashed on the gloves, visibly in pain, and then takes a cross check after the play, and only one of them gets called. Ryan Henry heads to the box to serve the penalty for Cazola. Two minute cross check and a game misconduct. So we're gonna play four on three. Not what we wanted to see. Yeah, and this third period has not been pretty at all. You're, you're exactly right. Scala doing everything to clear the zone, and he does, and the Demon Deacons bring it back in offsides. Corwin will strip his team of an offensive zone chance on the power play. With a four on three and two guys in the box, I think at this point, Panthers are just going to try and save this penalty kill and keep the score as low as possible. And it doesn't appear that the Deeks are trying to run up the score either, but we'll see how this progresses. 
Lobel and Kerouac, the two on the ice forward-wise, along with the top defense pairing of Rigby and Corwin. Lobel at the circles, he'll get it to Rigby. High slot, back to Lobel. A lot of open ice here. Arm is up, this is another penalty against High Point. Five on three power play now. Shot on, saved by Olweiler, and puck is loose, but the whistle was blown prematurely. Olsen with a very aware play. This is gonna be a slashing call against Jack Olsen. So that'll now make it five on three for the Demon Deacons because you can't take a third player off the ice. You have to have at least two skaters on the ice at all times. Olweiler has headed to the bench. It's an equipment change. Something is wrong with his mask. He's gonna take Ian Temkin's mask. Five on three here. Uh, it, it appears it's only four on three. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Looks like I thought that Wake Forest might be sending another player out from their bench. Does not seem like it though. But again, th this is not a situation you see very often where you have this many penalties in such quick succession. Yeah. The one thing I. Th what the Panthers needed to do to kind of crawl back in this game is stay out of the box, and they have unable you're, to do you're that. You're exactly period. right. You said that coming into the period, and the second period as well, and it has come back to bite them. Four on three power play for the Deeks. Gregoire gets it at the circles, slides it back to Licavoli. His slap shot didn't find the net or Olweiler but it found Gregoire. That pass to Gregoire from Blakely is picked off. Gregoire with a good move to get past Macheska as well as Calkins. He'll hold up, finds Blakely, gets it back. That slap pass is broken up by Calkins. That was a good look from Licavoli, but Calkins with another great defensive play, one of many today. Arms up, and that's touched up, so now we're gonna play three on three hockey. No, it's not overtime. And we will still have another penalty here. It's an interference call. A crazy amount of penalties in this third period, especially recently. Get some three-on-three -three hockey, and that'll close out for a couple of seconds. It'll be like. about yes. 10, seconds 10 seconds of okay. even strength. And then it'll be 25 until the Panthers are able to get Another player back in. Honestly, there's just so much to keep up with here. It's it, it's it's so so much of a crapshoot as to what's actually going down in terms of the penalty box. So, can tell you this much though, Chauvin will be released from the box in 10 seconds, and then 15 seconds later, either Johnson or Henry will be released from the box for the Panthers. If anything, that last penalty assessed to Wake Forest takes away some of their major power play time, which at this point, up six to three, I don't think they're too worried about. And so that will free Chauvin from the box. Gebhardt's gonna get onto the ice for the first time in about 10 minutes of game time, maybe about half an hour of real time. And just a few more seconds until Dakota Johnson comes back in. I believe, it, Either Henry or Johnson will come in when the penalty to Rob Cazola expires. I think Henry was the one that served jo uh, that served Cazola's penalty. I'm not sure which one will decide that they want to leave the box though. That slap shot blocked by Kennedy and it will go into the corner. Picked back up by Rigby. Over to Corwin, now Rigby. That shot was a rocket, went high of the crossbar. Sonny will field it back 
from that pass off the glass from Calkins. And it's fielded by Olweiler, who will glove it down. And I suppose we were wrong. Nobody has been released from the penalty box for High Point. Three minutes and three seconds left in regulation. The two-minute penalty to Cazola has expired. And now the official is going to come over and have a talk with Ryan Henry, who will exit the box. Yeah, I was wondering what was going on there as the penalty clock had expired, but I almost leave the box. Big winner from that exchange there is Eric Smith as he finally gets to sit back down in the penalty box. Serving as the attendant in the high point side. And I don't know why we're having such a lengthy conversation here. I think they're trying to get things sorted out here on the High point side of the penalty sheet. Henry went back over to the sideline. And even if this team's down, they still like to have a lot of fun. Power play for the Deeks. Rigby, high slot. Cross ice pass, great chance for the Demon Deacons and another cross ice pass. One pass too many perhaps. Corwin was looking for Siffringer on the back door, couldn't find him. Rigby, Gebhardt, slap shot. Oh my goodness, he got the water bottle. Fourth goal of the day for Andrew Gebhardt. It's on the power play and it's seven to three. Wow, Gebhardt with an amazing shot there. Not much Michael Olweiler can do there. And Gebhardt has been the driving force of this Demon Deacon offense and is, as you can see, with four goals on the day, has been one of the primary reasons that they are up so big against the Panthers. This game has gotten a little out of hand for the Panthers. See well, if they can close it out and keep the score where it is. Well, you think about it. I mean, Gebhardt had an off game the last time that these two teams played. And it showed on the scoreboard, final score of four to four. In this game, if you take away the four goals from Gebhardt, this is a three to three hockey game. It just shows the impact that he has on this team. And you could visibly see it in this game uh, when Gebhardt was in penalty. Yeah, when he had that, when he was in the penalty box in the second period, High Point tilted the ice in their favor and was able to cut the lead down to one. And then as soon as he came out of the box, uh, immediately he scored his hat trick goal, the third. Two minutes left here in this game between Wake Forest and High Point. Panthers with real no answer to Gebhardt. The Demon Deacons have lived in the offensive zone in this period. Kerouac backhanded pass, sticked away by Olweiler. He tried to find, did Kerouac lobel on that play. And now we've got five on four. This will be a power play for the Deeks. As it was four on four, that's a good block by Macheska. Under a minute and a half to play now. Licavoli brings it into the zone. Now Lobel, his shot pad save Olweiler, and he'll cover it up. Nice save by Olweiler. Although there's been seven Deacon scores, Olweiler has played a pretty good game and has made some nice saves throughout this game especially considering the pressure that's been put on him by oh, the Deacon offense. Oh, without a doubt, 41 shots on goal. One minute remaining in the period as that pass is broken up. A good shot from a sharp angle, though. It's shouldered away. Siffringer tried to get it. In the top corner, Olweiler standing tall. That pass was a good look to the circles, but Lobel couldn't collect it. As we move 45 seconds left in the third. Licavoli to the corner. Pageant 
Now Brown gets a touch, but Licavoli picks it back up. Shot, trying to find the near corner. And finally, we're back to five on five, 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 on five hockey, I should say, as Johnson finishes serving Nup's penalty. Christian Kuntz is going to take a stick check there. Brown gets it into the zone on sides. This is a chance for the Panthers as time winds down. Kuntz moving in, puts it to the slot, and Puck clears the zone, or the danger zone, I should say. Five seconds left in the neutral zone. Wake Forest will let the clock run out, and they start the new year with a win. Final score here from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Wake Forest 7, High Point University 3. A tough loss for the Panthers to start their semester, but a good win for the Demon Deacons. A stellar performance from both Andrew Gebhardt and Rob Cazola. Two goals for Cazola, four for Gebhardt, and he was the difference as a four-goal difference on the scoreboard in advantage of the Deeks. One last time from Winston-Salem, Luke Artizone, Graham Tuck, everyone helping out here in Winston-Salem. So long for now, we'll be back in action will the Panthers next weekend on the road against UNC Charlotte. They'll have the stream for that one. And then two weeks after that, they'll be at Liberty picking up their conference play for the new year. But here from Winston-Salem, 7-3 the final. And have